Hello again everyone. Today on 3 Minute Intellectual we're going to be talking about baseball, which for Cubs fans like myself has been a pretty tough topic for a very long time now. But this past Major League Baseball season finally put an end to a literal lifetime of futility. And after 108 long years, the World Series trophy finally made its way back to the north side of Chicago. While the century-long struggle of the lovable losers is well known, the story of how the Cubs got to that World Series in 1908 is all but forgotten by modern sports fans. It's one of the strangest and most controversial stories in the history of baseball, which is saying something considering how much history baseball has. So today we're going to be talking about the 1908 pennant race between the Chicago Cubs and the New York Giants and what came to be known as Merkel's Boner. No, seriously, that's what they called it. Very different use of slang terms back then. With just a handful of games remaining in the 1908 season, the National League found itself knotted in a three-way tie for first place between the New York Giants, the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the Chicago Cubs. On September 23rd, an estimated 20,000 fans packed the polo grounds in New York for a pivotal matchup between the Giants and the visiting Cubs. The game was tied 1-1 to -one when the Giants came up to bat in the bottom of the ninth inning. With two outs and the winning run on first, rookie first baseman Fred Merkel came up to bat. That morning, the Giants' regular first baseman, Fred Tenney, was scratched from the lineup with lower back pain, and Giants manager John McGraw put the young Merkel in the starting lineup. At only 19 years old, it was the first major league game Merkel ever started. With the game and possibly the pennant on the line, Merkel hit a clutch single, moving teammate Moose McCormick 90 feet from a win. Bottom of the ninth, two outs, a man on first and third, and shortstop Al Bridwell steps to the plate. Bridwell swings at the very first pitch and hits what looks like a walk-off single into center field. The runner on third touches home and the polo grounds go nuts. Giants fans storm the field and halfway to second base, Fred Merkel turns around and heads to the dugout to celebrate with his teammates. When Cubs second baseman Johnny Evers sees Merkel heading off the field, he starts yelling for center fielder Solly Hoffman to throw him the ball. If you don't follow baseball, it might not be obvious why Evers is raising holy hell to get the ball thrown to second. Baseball rules dictate that a run doesn't count if, during a play, the third out is made by a runner being forced out. Meaning just because a guy touches home before an infielder can toss it to first, for example, doesn't necessarily mean the run counts. Through the madness of fans rushing the field, the ball somehow finds its way to Evers on second base. The umpires confer and determine Merkel never touched second base and, by rule, Merkel was out, meaning the run didn't count. How the ball got to second is debated to this day. Some reports claim it was wrestled from a fan and thrown to second. Others claim the ball was thrown into the stands, then somehow retrieved and thrown to second. Others claim somebody grabbed a second ball and tossed it to Evers. Whatever actually happened, the unruly New Yorkers couldn't be cleared from the field, and umpires eventually had to call the game on account of darkness, and the game went down as a tie. After the Merkel game, the Giants won 10 of their last 15 games to end the season 98-55. and 55. And in dramatic fashion, the Cubs also finished 98-55, and 55, including a win over the Pirates, pushing Pittsburgh a half game back and out of contention. Had the debacle with Merkel never happened, the Giants would have been on their way to the World Series, and I'd likely be talking about 109 years of futility. But instead, 40,000 people, the largest crowd to ever watch a baseball game to that point, gathered once again at the Polo Grounds on October 6th for a one-game playoff to determine the National League champions. The Cubs ended up winning that game 4-2 and going on to beat the Tigers in the World Series four games to one. Merkel had a 19-year career in baseball after that, but no matter what he did, he never got out from under that play or the bonehead moniker bestowed upon him because of it. Thanks again for watching another 3-Minute Intellectual video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a like and a subscribe down below. If you're interested, there's more links in the description as always, and hopefully you learned a little bit today. Now go learn a lot.